very quick when he's on form. Bjorn Ferry, 121. Bjorn Dahlen of Norway, starting number 122. Two. Him and Ferry should work together nicely to uh, close up this race. And then Kazar of Slovakia, starting 123. Zdenek Vitek, who's been one of the best Czechs over the last seven, eight seasons. Mikhail Schlesinger also in the uh, race today. No sign of him so far. And as we watch Vitek, I'll just try and uh, locate Schlesinger's performance. I haven't seen him in the top 20. Well, here he is coming in for the pro. No wonder I can't find him. He's uh, in that last group. Two clicks to clockwise. For Slesinger, so moving in a roughly four millimeters. Seems to have made absolutely the right decision. So four out of five, we'll put that third shot down to human error from uh, Mikhail. And uh, is it going to be another medal day like he achieved in Antolz two years ago? I don't think so, even with that one miss. The pressure at the top is so immense. As I mentioned, only two of the top ten have shot clear so far today. Tough conditions. Alexander Oss with nine out of ten. Well, here we go. One of the hot favourites to win today. Ole Einar Bjorndalen. Ten World Championship goals to his name already. Can he add another one this afternoon here in Pyeongchang? Simon Foucault of France goes clear in the prone and uh, is looking very good indeed. Oh, he's thrown that one wide. He needs number five. He's got number five. Look at the time, though. 19.11 from shoot-off would have been soundly beaten. Foucault will watch the replay and curse himself for that. Hannibald now, 18.30. Went clear in the prone as he usually does. Standing shooting hasn't been quite as convincing this year. This is quick. I think the snow is getting quicker at last. Five out of five. Hannibald is not out of the running. 19-11, and Hannibald's only got some 60 metres to go before the clock will stop on his intermediate time after the second shoot. Well, it's taken a long time for the conditions to change, but the very fact that Hannibal has out-skied shoot-off on the middle five kilometres indicates to me that the snow is getting quicker. Watch the time. Hannibal uh, shoot-off on 19.11. Well, there seemed to be a little bit of confusion there. I have a feel it looked as though Hannibal had gone on to the penalty loop when he didn't need to because uh, all five targets seem to have gone down. We'll uh, clarify that, but I'm pretty sure he was on the penalty loop and the clock did not seem to stop. But we'll uh, clarify that in a moment. Shoot-off time uh, after the second shoot, 19-11. Well, no news coming through. Just looking at Hannibal's time after the first shoot for Norway. Well, I've got him in ninth, 13.2 behind at that stage. Now, all the uh, Norwegian coaches looking on anxiously as uh, Hannibal does the rounds. Well, still no sign of him on the computer. It's taking a little bit of time to get that sorted out. Uh, apologies with the technical problems here in Pyeongchang, but I'm sure we'll uh, clarify it in uh, 
the not too distant future. Landertinger coming through. He's in the top 10 at the moment. So again, Austria continuing the form that they showed in Antolt just uh, two weeks ago. Hodiat of Slovakia, 111 behind. He hits the top 10 for now as well. That's a very good race from him. And uh, he'll look forward to a good start position in the pursuit tomorrow. Not sure they're going to look forward to doing uh, lap after lap of this two and a half kilometer course. I just don't see any way that they're going to be able to lay down any more of the track. But uh, they achieved incredible things last night. I think they'll call in another five, six hundred volunteers for tonight's effort. And if the temperature drops, they could all relax after that. But there's no doubt that they're going to have uh, a sleepless night tonight for the second time in succession. McAveev clearing the prone and he's pretty quick as well still got 30 seconds Hannibal as you can see has gone out in first position apologies for the delay on that 1910 he's got a one second advantage over Shudoff now Shudoff was not particularly quick on that last loop so I think advantage Hannibal advantage the veteran at 39 he is flying Bjorn Darlan will be in for his first shoot very shortly He's uh, on the course at the moment. I'll try and let you know how he's getting on at 1.3. He's gone through 1.3, 5.2 seconds down on shoot-off. He's 3.2 seconds down on large burger, but significantly he is three seconds ahead of Halvard Hannevold, who leads after the second shoot. And remember, Bjorn Dahlen starts slowly. Now, this is quick as well. Mesotic is uh, even quicker, by my reckoning, than uh, Halvard Hannevold at this stage. In fact, uh, just a couple of seconds in it, Hannevold with the advantage. And with those two misses, Mesotic has thrown away his chance. The Austrians got the shooting spot on two weeks ago. They've lost a little bit of it. Oh, so close to falling. Well, you haven't won this race until you've descended that hill for the last time. That was Hang. Now, here goes Hannibald. He's got to uh, get this one absolutely right. Alexander Oss has come out of nowhere. He's come out of nowhere to take the lead. And Norway's decision to go in groups three and four have been justified because Oss was nowhere to talk about after the second shoot. At 6.3 kilometers, Oss was down in 13th position, 26 seconds behind Maxim Shudov. Here is Bjorn Dahlen. He's already missed, but the way the snow is going, that doesn't really matter at the moment. Four out of five, 150 metres. With the track speeding up, he can make up for that without any problem at all. He is still in the race. Well, here's the man to beat at the moment, and Hannibal coming down towards the finish. He needs to stay on his feet, and he is not... Uh, I dare say he's not the lightest on his feet of the Norwegian team. Here he goes. Hold your breath. Hannibal coming into the finish. Oh, he copes with that very well indeed. Nicely round. He's through the danger area. Now he breaks to the right. 24.41 the time he's after. Oss has produced a wonderful time over the last loop. Has the 39-year-old managed to match him? 20 seconds to get inside that. And he's still got another 15 metres to go. Hannibal gets the lead. 20 24-29. What is it about Halvard Hannibald when he hits the majors? He hits form. He can't believe it, but he can't relax quite yet because with the conditions getting so much faster, we have to keep a careful eye on the last group. Just trying to track down Large Berger after his first shoot. And Berger of Norway is down in 30th position. He's 32 seconds behind. So, from Russia to Germany, and now it's Norway who hold the advantage. Hannibal Oss in gold and silver medal position. Shudoff has been pushed down into the bronze, just like Zeitsaver in the women's event earlier on. But on that occasion, it was two Germans who nipped into positions one and two. Mickey Grice is right up there. Maybe a little too early to see the slow-mo of Halvard Hannibal. It really is astonishing. And uh, at the end of every season, the Norwegians 
keep telling him that he should retire. He says, no, I've still got more victories in my legs. And certainly today, he is uh, doing everything he can to prove that. He leads the men's sprint at the World Championships at 39. Hannevold showing that age is no limitation. Three world titles he's got already. In fact, the Olympics in Nagano, his first in 98. Then he got the sprint in Oslo in 99. He won the individual again in Chianti Manzisk in 2003 and he leads here. Large Berger is one man who can challenge him. Now, what's happened to Berger? 18.23. I'm afraid we've got another timing issue there. Shudoff's time is not 16.23. I think Shudoff's time... No, something extraordinary has happened there. I think Large Berger must have taken a bad fall. So uh, Hannibal has survived that challenge. He's probably heard that Bjorn Dahlen has missed on the first shoot. Is Hannibal going to add his fourth world title to his name? Well, I think uh, <laughs> there wouldn't be many more popular victories. Everyone hoping that uh, Bjorn Dahlen can continue his success, of course. But uh, Hannibal, he's a real grafter, a real fighter. He's stuck to his guns. Everyone telling him his technique is wrong, but he's stuck to it. And uh, he's produced the goods time and time again. Al Makoff racing for Australia gets 6.14 behind the winning time. That will not be quick enough uh, to qualify for the pursuit event. But good experience for him nonetheless. And uh, while well, we've got a moment to recover. Now, what has happened to Large Berger? Sort of have to check everything over a few times. Now, I'm looking at the computer. We had Berger a long way behind. I've got uh, Large Berger just 4.6 seconds off that lead of Halvard Hannevold after the second shoot. And so, uh, well, believe what you like. The uh, TV caption had him some two and a half minutes behind. The uh, computer which uh, tracks all the live timings, has got him just 4.6 behind. I think it's more likely that it's 4.6. He's only missed twice. And if that is the case, Berger could be the man who lifts the crown at the end of today. Things all going Norway's way. At the moment, at the finish, they have, of course, Hannevold leading with the gold medal position and a time of 24.29. Oss in second, just 12 seconds behind. Shudov still in third. Tim Burke of USA. Oof. Well, that's the easy part of the downhill. How's he going to cope with the second phase? Looking nervous, but he's safely through. Good recovery from Tim Burke. Now he can just let the feet recover a little. Almost see his toes clenched up inside his boots as he came down that second phase. The winning time has long gone, but a top 10 for Tim Burke at the moment would be a very impressive run. Two misses on the day. He's got himself into eighth. Well done. What a shame about those two missed targets. Bergman missed twice in the pro. Oh. Matty Nielsen, the best of the Swedes, lying in 17th at the moment. No, a bad day for Bergman, and that means it's going to be a bad day tomorrow. He might not even qualify, only the top 60 going through. Still very few have shot clear. We've got Hannibal who went 10 out of 10. Shudoff did likewise. And as we mentioned earlier, Ivan Jolla has hit 10 out of 10, but is now pushed all the way down into 21st position. Now, keep your eyes out for Large Berger. He's on his last lap. Still waiting for him to go through 8.4 kilometres. Total distance for the men's sprint, 10 kilometres, as I'm sure you know. Won't be long before Berger hits that stage.